Hello and welcome to my office. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide to law fishing and uh, that's going to begin right now. Right, what I'd first like to talk to you about is law selection. Um, when I very first started, I started off with little spinners and spoons and things like that. And my catch rate wasn't uh, terribly high, uh, but it did get me my first ever fish because I'm a nice big spinner. Um, what I'm going to do is show you my law selection now, uh, which is basically my go to set. If I want to go out and have give myself the best possible chance of catching a pike uh, or a perch or a chub, um, then this is definitely the law selection that I take out. And I'll show you guys now. That you can see there is a, um, a small Savage Gear uh, jig box. And uh, jigs are definitely a go to uh, law for myself when I'm going out and fishing, especially for pike and perch. Um, here we have a, a small selection. Um, this one's quite battered, uh, it's a little cannibal shad. Um, this actual pattern's caught me, I think, three chub, just that pattern on its own. Uh, caught me three chub in two sessions. Uh, and it saw me catch a couple of pie, uh, a couple of perch, um, which I put on the Facebook page not that long ago. I'll put that in there. And then there's another cannibal shed here. This one was a, a five gram, but I've uh, chopped the weight down at the front, so it's actually more like a two or three gram now. This one sinks a lot slower in the water, and means that when I'm on my local canal, which is absolutely full of rubbish. Um, I can flick this just above bottom so I'm not uh, getting snagged up on the weed or tin cans or plastic bags and uh, this one actually I, I had a um, a nice eight pound pike on it the other day on the canal so I put that one back now to a different range them two were cannibal shads by Savage Gear uh, the three in the middle here are some of the pro shads from Fox um, that's a very nice pattern there, had lots of jacks on that. Um, show you a couple of us. All these are weighted with 5 grams. It's just my preferred casting weight to be honest. And I can work them exactly how I want to work them in the water. Um, and with all the waters close by to me, it's spot on. Spot on for the river, canal, lakes. There's three of them now. I have to say, I've not yet caught on this one. But saying that, I don't think I've used it yet. Uh, the perch one definitely is always a favourite. Uh, perch patterns and pike patterns are always spot on for perch and pike um, because they're very cannibalistic in themselves. But I put them in there. As I say, this box here is definitely a go to um, if I want to go out and give myself the best chances of catching a pike um, on light tackle. Now, if I was going to go out in search of a specimen, uh, I'd take the heavier rod. And these are some swim baits, swimming jerks. Uh, from Savage Gear, um, that's a soft, a soft uh, foreplay swimming jerk. Uh, this is the hard, hard swim. Um, so that one's what, 52 grams. This one's 60, I think. Yeah, 68 grams. And what we we'll do is put that on my heavier rod. Um, I mean, some people you can say, oh, you could get away with fishing a lighter rod. You could, you know, potentially cast it with a, a 30 gram uh, if you're fishing only close range on canals, but you just won't get the right action on it. You need a bit of a stiffer rod. So when you pull this in the water, you want to get them flicks on the tail, and that's how you're going to get your hits. And as I say, this is for the bigger fish. I mean, the small jigs are absolutely perfect for jack bashing. I mean, everyone, well, nearly everyone who I know who law fishes has that go-to area where if they're not doing too well, um, they can go to and get a chance of getting a one or two pound jack. And these laws are more than likely going to be the best thing to use every time. Because obviously, if you're using a bigger bait, they will go for it, but... Um, you limit how many fish you're going to catch. You're potentially catching a slightly bigger stamp though with these. So if I was targeting a big lake, uh, or if I wanted a, a, a bigger pike from my local water, I'd probably go to these. Uh, then I've got another small swimming jig. I mean, as I was saying before, with the um, with the jigs, that would be something I use on my lighter rod. Um, to be honest, I've still not caught anything on this yet. The very first trip I went out with it, I went and got snagged up on the far bank and had to get uh, the person on the, who lived in the house on the far bank to pull me free. And I've not used it since then. I, can't, I think it's broad because it looked nice, to be honest with you. Uh, put that down. Right, and that is basically 
my go-to selection if I was going to go out with my best chance of getting a fish these would be some of the laws I use I've got other bits and bobs but uh, these are the main ones if I was going to go out and wanted to get a fish um, this is, I believe would give me the best chance right so the biggest essential to any law fishing is the wire trace so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to make one I'm going to get all my bits and bobs together so what I'm going to be showing you um, how to make traces today and I'm going to show you how to make a stinger which is if you don't know what a stinger is um, a lot of people this is a cat outside mind up <laughs> you can use them on uh, soft baits that's basically what they mainly all used for if you're using jigs uh, and you keep getting snapped snagged uh, the tails off by pike and um, you put a little stinger on basically a wire trace uh, which you put uh, from the link right down the bait to let's say part way down the tail that way when a pike takes it if it takes it further down the back of the bait you've got more chance of hooking it and also if, if a pike or perch or, or chub takes your whole bait then you've got that extra support knowing that there's an extra tag hook on the back just in case the first hook comes out um, and then another thing I'm going to show you is the essential uh, classic wire trace, what you need for all your law fishing, no matter what anybody says. Um, usually around about I don't know, 12, 14 inches, something like that. Um, people use them longer, people use them smaller, depending on what they're going for. I mean, if you was drop shotting and you was using only 10 pound wire, uh, you know, you might only have it foot long something like that just in case just as a security procedure in case a pike was to take it um, if you're using medium to big laws you might use a little bit of a longer trace just in case a pike swoops in for it and, and, and misses or or you're playing a fish and it, it doubles back round on itself uh, you don't want to have it come back round and go back through the line that's the last thing you want you don't want to lose it a law or leave a hook in a fish's mouth that's the last thing you want right so these are my essential bits and bobs um, you can see these are the hooks from a stinger here. Um, these are Fox Rage PowerPoint hooks, I believe, and uh, absolutely spot on. Size six, because that's what I use basically for most of my laws. It's, it's an average size, especially for the small jigs I've got. A pair of pliers that's just for cutting the wire. I've got my crimping pliers here for the crimps. I've got a couple of packs of crimps here, different sizes, different breaking strains. Uh, got my forceps here uh, this is just in case I decide I want to squash down the trebles um, on my stinger I've got obviously the, the clips here for the wire just some savage gear ones the best the best clips you can get I and mean, I personally really really strong and I've got a few swivels in here and a uh, bit of shrimp tube just in case I want to tidy tidy the ring up, rig up so anyway I'll get started and obviously the last but not least is the wire the main part of the project that I actually just left down my side so I just had to quickly grab it. Uh, this is only £20. I'm making up a trace now for my uh, general small jig fishing uh, when I just want to go out and get a bite. Um, £20 alright. As I say, it's, it's really, really thin. I don't know why people who drop shot can't use can't use wire like that. It's, it's very thin. Seven strand. I mean, you get three or four jacks on it and you, you scrap it and make a new one. Use a bits and bobs. It's, it's, it's not expensive, really. It's inexpensive, especially when you're making your own. So you get three or four jacks on that. That kinks. Take off your swivel. Tape off. Take off the uh, the, the snap and uh, scrap the wire. Pull a new piece of wire off. Put another swivel on. Put another snap on. Couple of crimps. Job done. Right, now to the actual making of the trace. What I'm going to do is take a bit of wire. There isn't actually a lot of wire left on this. Nice left for wire. Snip it off with your pliers. Done. Done. Right, what you're going to do is get a crimp, uh, make sure to match up the breaking strain of the crimp uh, and guide uh, to the breaking strain of the wire using. So this is 15 to 28 pound crimps, uh, that means it will crimp properly on the wire and make sure it's secure. Um, I say I'm using 20 pound there, so that's perfectly fits on banging um, with what that suggests. Last thing you want to do is use a really, really big crimp and you end up having the wire pull through it. Um, 
which is something that can happen. What you do is get your crimp, put that on there first. There we go. We'll put the crimp on there. I'm going to do my swivel. Put the swivel over there like that. Now, you could put it through once and put it in inside the crimp like that and then and then pull it tight and, and use a crimp and blind. But what I like to do is send it back through the second time. So you put it through that side once and we'll put it through the bottom of it. So, so it just sat perfectly. As you'll see there, there's two loops. And all I do is hold that side pull the back end tight and then push it back up to the top as you can see there very nice neat and tidy what I'm going to do is take the crimping pliers I'm going to use a smaller small one because it's small crimps the small wire rest it in the groove like so make sure it's all lined up both ends square I'm going to pull it tight once really really firm let go as you can see there it's crimped it's nice and strong it's not going anywhere that's absolutely spot on that's the uh, strongest way I know of doing a crimp and uh, now it's time for the snap a crimp on the wire put the hole in that swivel over the top once again it's just repeating the same procedure as last time And there you go, you've got a trace ready to start fishing. Of course you can buy them ready made from a tackle shop or online and uh, they'll be near enough just as good as the ones you get now, especially the sort of Savage Gear stuff, the Fox stuff, it's always fantastic gear. Um, but at the end of the day you're doing this for a fraction of the price as uh, what the manufacturer would do. This is for my light fishing. Um, I'll also make up titanium traces if I'm using my heavier laws, because obviously like I said earlier, if you want to get your law back out of a snag, you're going to pull that braid and you want to get that law free. If you're using a braid that's only £20 braid and you're fishing, uh, sorry, uh, if you're using £20 wire and uh, using £80 braid, you're going to break the wire and you're going to lose the law anyway. So you might as well match it, match the hatch, so to speak. Um, I'm using uh, 70 plus pound uh, single strand titanium for the heavier laws so I can get them back. Um, with them, you wouldn't use small crimps like that, you'd use crimps that match. So crimps that fit from the specification of 70 pound, not 50 to 28 pound, uh, 50 to 28, because I can guarantee you will not even be able to fit it through that crimp. Uh, yeah, that's spot on, and that's how you make wire trace. What I'm gonna show you now is how to make a stinger. One size six, what I'm gonna do is, Take a length of wire once again, but what I'll do this time is, excuse me, get one of the soft laws out. So this uh, perch pattern, um, this perch pattern um, jig. As you can see, the hooks there. There's all this space here for a jack pipe to get hold of, or a perch to step at, and uh, they're going to just come free. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make a stinger up that sits about there so you want it almost an inch behind this hook it still keeps the movement but uh, you've got every chance of, of, of hooking a fish on it um, and it slightly increases your chance than just getting it on there so what I'm going to do is pull off a length of wire I'll pull it off longer than I need it so we'll, we'll say that the shad itself is about 12 centimeters I'm going to pull this to about 14 to, to 18 centimeters just to cut it off it just gives you a bit of movement then so cut it with the wire cutters. What I'm going to do first off is I'm going to put a loop in this. I'm not going to use a swivel. I don't particularly, I've never actually watched people um, make up stingers before. I just kind of 
figured I needed one, so I started making them up myself. Uh, so I don't know if it's politically correct how I do it, but um, take a length of wire, get my crimp. And so I've never had any problems. Put the crimp over there, and like before, uh, when I showed you how to make the wire trace, I put a swivel on there, put it back through twice, and, and tighten it right up. What I'll do with this is, just like before, put it through once, give myself a bit of line. I'll put it through again. Similar to what I did before. There we go, it's back through, pull it tight. I'm gonna send it back up again. This time I'm gonna leave a little loop there. And I'm gonna pull it completely tight. And get the crimping pliers. Once again, line it up. Make sure it all fits snug, both ends are equal in there. Smack bang in the middle. bit tight. The reason why I say one strong uh, crimp on there, make sure it's perfect. If that was wonky uh, or it wasn't completely how I wanted it to be, um, just leave it, cut it off, do it again. Um, don't try and re-crimp it, otherwise you're going to break the crimp. Uh, that's the last thing you want or you're going to weaken the integrity of it and when you get a fish on it's going to break. And that's really not what you want. So you've got your little loop there, that loop is basically to either loop over the top of um, the jig there which you can do or clip it straight onto the wire trace um, so what I'm going to do is now measure it up with my law once again crimp over the wire very quickly I might just skip this bit the hook like so put it through once it's exactly the same as our crimped everything else so we we'll put that the length of line and um, the length of wire through the crimp the first time and we can adjust that to how long we want the, the wire trays to be for the stinger so let's point it about there for now Let's take a look. Ooh, almost. This needs to be a little bit longer. So what we'll do is I'll start to pull that down. See how long we can get it. Ooh, you know that's prop that's probably spot on. So what I'm gonna do is pull it all tight. Now that that's tight, I'll then pass this end through here. So it goes back through the crimp. Put it right the way through, right the way down, right the way down, right the way down. Until it's all completely tight like that. And what I'm gonna do is cut that tag off. Pliers. Make sure it's all snug, everything fits perfect, which it does, that's perfectly fine. And then take the crimping pliers. Job done. Absolutely perfect little stinger. Now, if that wasn't uh, a good enough description, uh, it wasn't, uh, it didn't look good enough, um, what I might do is I'll make uh, a, a document with all the pictures uh, and instructions um, so you can get a better idea of how to make something like this or a wire trace. What I'm going to do is trim it down a little bit more and trim it down quite enough. Uh, it should be more than strong enough and I'll show you now look, we've just made this up, this little stinger. Oh, just stab myself. We'll see the length of it, let's see how it sits. That is, it's that perfect. And that also gives me a little bit of adjustment. I could put it an extra few millimetre, centimetre or two further down if I want to, or I could keep it just a, an inch or so, 
behind uh, the hook in the top of the shad. That's absolutely perfect. And uh, very quick and very simple to make, and it can save you a lot of fish. Um, definitely stop stop losing losing more fish if you've got a little stinger on like that. The Stinger Hall of Fame. Right now onto the going fishing part. Uh, your essentials, what you're going to need. Uh, what I definitely say is a pair of forceps. These are some smaller ones. I have a bigger pair in my bag. But what I'll do is always keep the small ones in my side pocket. Um, I wear like combats and work trousers, things like that. So they always have side pockets next to the leg. Basically, it means that when I get down on my knee to unlock the fish, all you have to do is quickly slip my hand in my pocket, pull out a pair of these, and unlock it. If I need the bigger ones, they'll be in the bag on my back, and it's still not too much. Just a rest of fish in the water, get in my bag, and get the bigger uh, forceps out. Definitely must. Uh, I would advise you not to go out pike fishing if you don't have a pair of forceps on you. Also, which is an essential as well, really. Um, this is a pair of pliers. These are the small ones because I've just got them to hand now. Uh, I've got some longer ones in my bag. Um, these ones are the ones I use for making traces. But I've got a pair in my bag that I use if um, I deep hook a fish, which I actually haven't done yet and I haven't had to do with this. Um, but sometimes it can take it down the throat. And if so, and if you can't, if you really can't get them hooks out, you use these as a very, very last resort. A pair of long nose pliers and snip the hook, not necessarily the whole hook. But you want to snip the hook, as in uh, the wire of the hook. Uh, you don't want to be leaving a trouble in a fish's mouth at all, and this will give them the best chance of uh, healing properly and recovering. So as I say, let's see how it's going out. I want to get some jacks out. Got a little law box here in my bag, and then I might take this as well, just in case for a bit of a change bait. Um, which is when it comes to picking a rod, um, as I mentioned when I spoke through the laws, um, if you're using small jigs, um, obviously, when you buy a rod, it tells you uh, what grammage it'll take uh, and what it's suggested. Obviously, it, 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 a rod that says it, it can cast, uh, I don't know, 10 gram to 30 gram can cast less, obviously, but it just means that you'll get a better better action and response if you use you know, a law that's more than 10 grams. These are weighted with five gram jig heads, but the laws themselves have weight to them. That takes them over the 10 gram mark. The rod I use at the minute is a, an 8 to 30 gram. Um, I also have a bigger rod, a um, heavier rod, which is used for these kind of baits. It goes up to uh, a 60 gram, uh, that's the Daiwa. And um, so just kind of use common sense. Um, don't get casting out one of these if you're using a drop shot rod or or an 8 to 20 gram or an 8 to 30 gram because you're not going to get the action on it. It's just going to be like you're reeling in weed every cast and you're not going to be able to set the hooks properly because these have bigger hooks on them, the bigger baits. So that's essential and make sure uh, if you're not confident in chinning fish, I would suggest taking a net every single time um, because you want to reduce the amount of time the fish is in the water for and reduce the stress on, stress on the fish. Um, I'm fairly confident in chinning the fish out. So if I'm fishing an area where I know it's not going to be steep banks, like, such like of most canals, um, then sometimes I'll avoid taking a net because mm, they're not always helpful. Uh, sometimes, especially if you're using big laws with more than one treble, um, if you get a fish, it's only just lightly hooked. That fish, when you get into the net, could wrap itself up, do rolls, and you got the hook buried in the net, and it's it's going to do more harm to the fish than good, because um, then troubles are going to be pulling from the inside of its mouth. It's not always nice. Um, but if I'm fishing steep banks, uh, like on uh, a lot of rivers um, or some lakes, you can get snaggy areas. I'd always always say take a net in those situations because you don't want to have to risk scrambling around trying to get down to the fish when you know, you could have it on the bank or not to put it back straight back already. Probably the most important part of any type of pike fishing, including uh, with laws. Uh, this goes for any type of law fishing in general. I don't care what anybody says. Always, always use a wire trace. But as I've just shown you in making a wire trace, you, you can, you get them in all different sizes now and strengths you can even get you can get them as low as 10 pound you can get them as high as 70 80 pound uh, when it comes to to inland predatory fish um, so there's no excuses not to use one i know a lot of people uh, who drop the shot for perch uh, tend to just use uh, fluoro because it's stiff um, and people seem to think that pike can't bite through it or they can't bite, bite through braid i've heard people tell me that 
I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me here, but I'm going to say that is naughty. You shouldn't do that. Always use a trace. I don't care what you're doing, even if it's just a £10 trace. Um, because even people using drop shot laws can still catch fish up to, you know, you can get fish over £10. It, it doesn't matter what, what, what setup you're using. I mean, my. I can remember my first ever double figure pike as, as a child. I well, say child, I was probably 16 years old. Uh, my first double figure pike was on what, a one inch law. It was a tiny, weeny little rubber law. And I was using a wire trace, as you should. Um, just jigging it on the way home from my friend's house when I'd been out that day. And, and yeah, I had a 10 pound pike. And little one inch, two inch laws are regularly used in drop shotting. And all you're going to do is you're going to get a pike on, it's going to snap you off, and the fish is going to have a hook in its mouth. I mean, people have said to me, oh yeah, but the little tiny drop shot hooks, you know, it's nothing in a fish's mouth, it's not going to bother them. But at the end of the day, if a fish has got a hook in its mouth, then there's more chance of infection in the wound. Um, and what we want to do is we want to reduce the chance of a fish getting ill um, or possibly getting an infection. So I don't care what type of law fishing you do, please, please use a wire trace. Uh, even though people tell you it doesn't matter, especially if you eat small law, they don't care. <laughs> Um, definitely also use suitable suitable line um, if you're going out for these big laws um, I'd say personally I didn't used to use braid but I've started using it and I'm never ever going to go back uh, braid is almost a must now especially for myself I've got two rods both rigged up um, my small jig rod um, is loaded with 30 pound um, that's perfect for this perfect for my small rod it, it threads through the eyes smooth it comes off the reel smooth and uh, I get the nice action on the jigs nice and stiff um, with these uh, people are gonna think I'm crazy I use 80 pound uh, Dom uses 70 80 pound braid for his big laws basically some of these laws are expensive um, so the last thing you want to do is get cast into a snag get it snagged up and you end up losing your hooks it's not all about ragging fishing uh, it's not about pulling the fish as quickly as you can because you've got 80 pound braid on your rod is there to cushion the fish and you play the fish on the drag as always um and, and it's, it's all about the sport at the end of the day but that braid is just there one it gives you complete tension so that as soon as that fish takes you're going to feel it straight down the rod tip you can get a good strike and a good firm hook hold and then let's say a fish rubs you off in a snag you've got that pressure there you can pull that braid and it's just going to bend your hooks out and all you have to do is either bend the hooks back or put a brand new hook on and you've still got your law and uh, as I say it's not all about pressure in the fish it's just just about getting your laws back at the end of the day